very many things make me as happy as another new laser cutter. One that has the potential of being really good? Well, that's pretty awesome. And one that actually has an air assist and a honeycomb available? Even better. Let's check this out. So this is a 10 watt laser from Longer. This is the Ray 5 10 watt version with touchscreen display. And it looks to be similar to other ones we've tested here on the channel, but hopefully a good high quality unit. Comes with some glasses, all well packaged. Same story I always bring up is packaging is key. And this is a really simple setup. Nothing really to say here. Uh, you're paying a good amount of money, so you want to make sure it arrives alive. And uh, looks like a winner. What a nice looking kit. We've got our aluminum extrusions, some brackets, heavy duty laser diode module, our gantry fully assembled. Very cool. I'm liking that. And pretty simple system. Our touchscreen display. Yeah, not much to it. <laughs> it's so simple. I was looking for the other, uh, the other stepper motor and it's hidden underneath here. So everything's pre-mounted right on the gantry, which is Pretty cool little system, I think. We'll see how that goes. Quick check of the instructions. It looks like a pretty straightforward build with good pictures, uh, really good graphic design on it, really clear, not, this is the difference with the good instructions and bad. A real picture of an assembled unit on a dark background can be horrible for a newcomer. This simple graphic art um, CAD renderings of the unit on a white background with simple lettering and simple illustrations of the fasteners and hardware. Well done. Uh, that is a near perfect instruction, even environmentally friendly, all on one sheet. So pretty simple stuff. Good that it came with that. And let's check, did we get an SD card? Yay them. So uh, again, for newcomers, it's good to have an SD card. Yeah, just saves you fishing around to try and find one for the price of them. I think every kit should throw them in. So we're away to the races, we can build this. It's worth also mentioning good Allen keys, the good uh, real hardened ones with ball ends on them. Nice touch. When putting the first step together, you want to make sure that you're starting off with a square frame. That's the critical part. And there's a bolt through into the extrusion in each corner. You want to start with those and just cinch them up just snug and then tighten your inner brackets, then go back to here to the outside. That way you're, you maintain square and you don't cant anything and it just comes together beautifully. might think I'm absolutely crazy, but I'm starting to actually enjoy putting these laser cutters together to test them. You can really tell a lot about a manufacturer, how things come initially, if you care to just pay attention. And this, like, I'm already feeling that this is a pretty quality item. There's no burrs, everything's nice and smooth. This, the adjusters are all set when it went together. It's a perfect fit absolutely perfect fit on the extrusion. There is zero wobble to the gantry. There's a little bit here, but we'll see if we get rid of that later. This, <laughs> for just sliding on, that's perfect. And yeah, there's a little therapeutic in a way putting these together because they're nice and simple. You always gotta have a little bit of fun when you're making things. can't quantify this on video. All I can tell you is these are the good case hardened fasteners. These are really good. A lot of yours as a mechanic. I can tell you they're good. <laughs> okay, first weakness I've actually found, believe it or not. The track for the laser relies on 
two, they're calling them isolated screws. They just have a little nylon or rubber spacer that you put on and tighten them in so that they take up the slack in the track here and keep, there's two from the front that are thumb screws and then these ones. And no matter what I do, I can't get it to take up the slack without biting so hard that it's very difficult to move. And that's the fact of what they're made of. A really high coefficient of friction between them and this bracket. Easy to solve though, uh, just use brass. Um, what I can do is uh, just get a piece of brass tube and cut it, or I can chuck up something on the lathe, but at a later date, that's what I'll do. It's not a big deal though, because when the lathes are sucked up, which it will be because we're cutting on a honeycomb is is quite stable up high and once you tighten your thumb screws it's kind of irrelevant as long as your laser is reasonably straight to the workpiece um, minor thing easy to fix if the manufacturer so chooses they could go with something a little bit different than that rubber spacer but overall it's fine it's a nice simple system with thumb screws yeah i think it's fine the other thing we can do is uh, just use a little bit of uh, dry lube of teflon lube on it and i think it would free rate up in a very short amount of time we're done the only thing left to do is to cable manage it this is very similar to the axe tool that we reviewed here on the channel there is no drag chains but uh, so be it. Uh, we can fasten them up however we see fit once we know what we're dealing with. Uh, basically put things at max travel and then fasten them. Um, but I like to just use it first and, and see where I'm at. Overall, everything went together absolutely fine, about half an hour. Uh, nice touch. They give you brackets and wood screws and the machine screws needed to fasten it to a wasteboard, which is very cool. Uh, very good idea to fasten things down. One, it keeps them from tipping, but this does have a tip sensor in it. But two, it just keeps things from wiggling around. Uh, if this thing is able to wiggle at all, then your work's gonna be destroyed. It's gonna be, well, you're gonna have etching all over the place or cuts where you don't want them. Uh, particularly when you get into like a raster movement, the laser, the whole gantry is gonna wanna walk. But check this out. This, uh, this design of foot with the rubber on the bottom seems to be really, really good. Um, better than the per gear that we did in a way. I like the way they are. They, they seem to be, they seem to grab quite well. So we could fasten it down out in the workshop when we get that far. It's absolutely key, in my opinion, is a honeycomb and a metal surface to cut against. Depends on your setup, but start here, get yourself a honeycomb and preferably get one the size of the whole work area, but this is fine for small stuff. Usually elevate that a little bit too. And this has a nice little side effect. By raising your work, you draw the laser up further into the gantry. And that simple physics, the further down it is here, the more inertia it's gonna have, the more, more flex in the whole system it's gonna have, and it's going to wanna wiggle. If you suck it up further into the gantry, it's more rigid and it's gonna be less apt to wiggle back and forth and have uh, little jaggies on your focus, so. Pretty cool. There's our flame sensor on the back side of our control panel. Looks like the same breakout, standard breakout board that I've seen in the other lasers we reviewed. And there'll be a potentiometer on it that we can adjust for uh, sensitivity. Okay, quick likes and dislikes time. SD card right on the top of the display. I love it. Power button right on the top of the display and it's the latching style. I love it. Perfect. USB plugged vertically into the top of here. I absolutely hate that and it is the worst possible place that they could have put it. This is bound to get broken in my shop, guaranteed. I am going to walk into this, snag this, because you can't have your wire out that way. That's where our laser lives. So this is absolutely horrible. The touch screen display, I absolutely love it. It is a thing of beauty. They did a beautiful job. Big buttons for my big ham-fisted hands. The controls are intuitive and the laser is super responsive. This feels like a, a resistive touchscreen 
the the give to it, but I don't think it is. It's way, way responsive. So we can change our steps. We can do our home, which is going to be set our home. There's there's no limit switches on this machine. So yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah, super, super intuitive. I haven't tried the Wi-Fi yet. There's no instructions for the Wi-Fi. So you have to go on their website to figure that out. It does pick up my Wi-Fi. So I don't think there's any problems there, but I love this. This display, two thumbs up. Beautiful design, lots of space between the icons, easy to work with. Overall, pretty happy with how things have come along. This is ready to get out to the garage and start cutting. Air assist pump came undamaged, no problems there. It comes with the tubing all coiled up. Shut off valve, we're not going to need that. And then our nozzle. So no instructions with it, but yeah, I don't really need them. That's pretty straightforward. Should be said that I really don't fancy the way you have to set the laser spacing on this. They give you the cylinder that you're supposed to put under the backside cradle here. I don't like it at all. It seems kind of a, a silly idea to me. Well, it works. It sits in there. It's perfectly formed. Like there's a, a hump in the backside that you saw in the video earlier, and it just sits on it. I guess it's okay, but man, that'd be a lot easier if we could just do something from the front or yeah, I'm sure there could be something a little better, better. I really like this UI framing is super simple. You move that over, move that up a touch and then frame again. That looks pretty good. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. That is a beautiful engrave. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely gorgeous. For no air assist, that's wonderful. I've actually chosen to not include the air assist in this video. Uh, I'm leaving them out of the first review video on any of these units and doing a follow-up. Uh, absolutely, you need the air assist. You 100% need one. To do any cutting, you need it. They don't come with it, so I've chosen to do them as follow-ups. Okay, next in line, we'll see how this one comes out. These lasers are just a wonderful tool to have in the lab. This allows us to bring one more thing to life when I, we come up with cool designs. Wonderful tool to have in the lab. Okay, let's see how that one did. Absolutely beautiful again. That is a gorgeous engrave. Look at how tack sharp that is. Wow, I'm happy with that. I don't think we can get any better for an engraving. That's just wonderful. No jiggy jaggies, no nothing. It's just tack sharp, so. Okay, since we established it can engrave just fine, can it cut? So to do that, I've plugged into Laser Gerbil, which is running on my laptop up here. I've just vectorized a simple dog print, the one I've done before with previous, uh, previous reviews. It connected, no problem. Uh, I still hate that USB, but uh, let's see what it does. Back up to 100 millimeters a minute, different piece of wood, and we'll see what happens. I know from experience that this should cut through just fine at 100 millimeters a minute, and it should be nice and clean. So this other piece of wood clearly has some nasty glue in it that's just brutal, and it feels hard too. So not real good for diode lasers. That looks better, just it, yeah, perfect. Check that out. Perfectly clean cut, wonderful. Very little soot for uh, no air assist. I'm impressed. That's actually a really, really nice cut. That's similar to the TS2, just nice and clean. Wonderful, uh, super happy with that. That 
can't be faulted. I'm quite pleased. For no air assist, can't go wrong. So that other piece of wood was our culprit. This is standard three millimeter Baltic birch, which is pretty tough stuff. Dialed lasers are pretty incredible to punch through this in just one pass and fairly quickly. So what do I think? I think this is a good laser, no doubt about it. Uh, good for the price point, bare minimum, no frills, no gimmicks. It's just, it is what it is. You get a laser and not much more. No drag chains, kind of sad. This USB straight up here, little sad. No, e-stop isn't a big deal because the power button is right here. Power input, beautiful spot. Legs are great. Frame is great and robust. Gantry is great and robust. Air assist works good. You'll see that in a future video. Honeycomb works good. Overall, it does work good. The touch screen, I love it. It's nice and simple, good menus. Pretty happy with this. This is gonna live on the bench for a little while and we're gonna put it through its paces. But for an initial try, that's beautiful results. I mean, there's no question in my mind, it does what a diode laser should do. So. Yeah, pretty cool kit. I kind of like it. It has a place on my bench.